We are now live. Welcome to, yeah, the counter offer. You definitely don't know what episode this is. No, this is not getting publicly stated what episode seven. Yeah, we took a little hiatus. A little hiatus. Well, I, yeah, we won't talk about that. It was that. Thanksgiving, you know. yeah. Yeah, yeah, good, good, <laughs> the whole, good blaming. Uh, <laughs> the whole month of December uh, yeah. was Thanksgiving. We did receive feedback that we have to banter more and we have to become a little bit more centered. So hopefully... The feedback. And we got some good feedback. Yeah, as we well, got some you know, great I mean. constructive. I don't think it's really constructive. It's just feedback. Yeah. So we got some really good ones. At least I do. And uh, <laughs> I know Eric's going to be talking about numbers because he loves talking well, about the I numbers. Well, I mean, my uh, articles are so old, they're probably. You know. <laughs> they're, yeah, they need to get <laughs> updated right now. If you'd like to start with the first one. Okay, the doom and gloom one. The doom and gloom. It's Let's funny, start it says it, it was 11 hours ago that it yeah. was posted, but it was really on uh, November 28th, Axios. You okay. Know, Axios loves to have those, like, grab you headlines, the doom and gloom, collapse. I think in, they're well, part of everyone. Quotes. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. It is a collapse in home prices is coming, experts say. Oh, gosh. I love how they add in the experts say. Yeah. Experts Who did say. they talk to? Uh, Third. Maybe me? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, they talked to their colleague. You know, in a right couple years, it'll be funny that they'll say, home prices are going to keep going up. Experts Said experts. Say. experts. Yeah. Uh, existing home sales have fallen for nine straight months. The supply of single-family homes is growing. And with mortgage is rates true? reading... Nine yeah, okay. months? Oh, yeah. Yeah. And with mortgage rates near 7%, Experts say large-scale housing slowdown is becoming increasingly likely. Okay. Although it does seem like that we we're already in that. If it's nine months. Yeah. You know, and they're always late. The slowdown. Yeah. So they're always late with everything. Yeah. Well, journalism and, and in general. Of course, you know it decreased. It's at least a nine month months in a row. However, it is off of the hottest year. Yeah. So year over year, That's it true. is going to be one of the, uh, you know. There wasn't there no no month was ever going to exceed last year's month. Yeah. In comparison, so these are the exact type of articles I like to look for. Ones that are uh, <laughs> really make you feel good about yeah, yourself. Exactly. Yeah. So well, it's articles like this that have actually created that housing freeze. You know, yeah. we've gone through these historic interest rate hikes over the whole year. Sellers are reading articles like that. They don't want to sell. They have, they have low mortgage rates, they have nowhere to go, and buyers are feeling the uncertainty, and they're just uh, in a bit of a freeze. Yeah, well, so. these are, th this happened when I started in real estate in 2009. Like, you have people who want to potentially buy, they have the money, they have the financing ready, and they're just uncertain. That's it. They're just uncertain. They're just sitting on the sideline. They don't know what to do. They're waiting for someone to push them. And ironically enough, in a good market, a good market is actually a seller's market, ironically enough. Yeah. So like when people say last year was a good market, that was a good market for a seller. Very true. How many of those people, they're either underwater or their their house, like there has to be statistics oh, about I read how a many- great article on that. Another doom you know, and that gloom? How, yeah, that well, how many people who purchased over the last two years- That's coming on Tuesday. Are underwater. Oh yeah, so, it's probably what, 6%? Uh, a lot. Um, Six, seven, maybe 10%. Yeah. But, uh, yeah. Okay. Good one. So mine is going to be very interesting. So we're going to do predictions. This is predictions from the for the 2023 housing market. All right. So I'm just going to throw it out there. All right. We'll do three. Then you'll do your other article, and then I'll do four. And you just tell me what your thoughts are. All, All right. right. Go for it. So this is the hot spot. Yeah. Prediction number one: the affordability crisis will stabilize stabilize as home prices post. Their first year over year, which you were just talking about, decrease in over a decade, settling somewhere, mortgage rates will settle five to six. So it's essentially saying the affordability, affordability crisis is essentially like I can't afford the homes that are on the market. I'm actually working with a buyer sort of that's like that where the pricing hasn't come down. So the first one, that's the first prediction. Yeah, well, uh, just on that note where buyers, they need to make the decision for themselves financially. It doesn't matter what the market is doing. If you're set financially and you want to buy a home, yes, it is your first home, it is a big purchase, 
but this is the type of market that you want to go into. Yeah. As long as you're comfortable. There's with no it. competition. It doesn't matter. There's no competition. Yeah, you don't want to be like, thinking about yeah, what's going no on in the market. There's no bidding wars. You want to yeah. be thinking about what's going on for you. Yeah. So if you can afford it, why not be shopping for a home right now? And I mean, look at the long term. Like, where do you want to be in seven, eight years? Don't renting? look at like, yeah, exactly. <laughs> Making someone else wealthy. Prediction number two. Housing markets in the Midwest and Northeast. Whoa, here we go. Housing markets in the Midwest and Northeast will hold up best as the overall housing market cools. Midwest, Northeast. Okay. Thoughts on that? That's a prediction number two. Uh, I would say... You're a little tentative. Not, not, not like Ohio. Well, I guess so. Sure. Midwest would probably thinking, be thinking Minnesota, in, uh, South Dakota, West, North Dakota. Not not California, obviously, but no. like people who are leaving California are going to Utah, Colorado, yep. Arizona, Nevada, Arizona. Yeah. I think those we are passed a, geography. a very good one. Yeah. 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 So, <laughs> I mean, Utah is on fire right now. Yeah. Utah, Arizona, it's crazy. Well, it's also like it's the low taxes. Really cheap. Yeah, yeah, exactly. More Back land. To that affordability. Yeah. Yeah. Well, Moving, that's actually another prediction on here, but prediction number three, new construction will focus on multifamily rental properties instead of sales. Prediction number three, new construction will focus on multifamily rental properties. So rentals instead of subdivisions, maybe new construction condominiums and things like that. Yeah, I, I would be surprised, but I'd also say why not go for both, you know? If you're you'd list it for sale, but then also you know have it as a rental, it's probably easier, and you get some like tax benefits or something from doing a rental. But uh, you know, I would like the optionality. I, I would say this is I'm going to take the extreme approach. I think they're only going to build multifamily because anything that's built in a high taxed city or state like New York, California, is the pricing has to be a crazy price. Like they only can be like 2,500, 3,000 a square foot because it was so expensive to build, to get approval, permits, holding costs. Yeah. So they'll move to rentals. That happened in 2009. All these brand new construction condominiums downtown converted from office to rental buildings instead of sales. And, and that's, you know, don't want to take credit, but I'm about to take credit. Uh, we helped rent all those buildings out. So <laughs> bringing well, FIDI, Financial down District. Line, further down the line, they could always The cash the flow for the developers, exactly, yeah. yeah. The cash flow for the, the developers is massive. So those are the- Yeah, especially when you're considering taking out a loan to do all of that, you want to have the cash flow to pay. Oh, yeah, up. yeah. Uh, I love this headline, real deal. Oh. Agents, life is good under 7%. <laughs> 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 is it life good? Uh, so much easier. Home buyers re enter the market. 7% interest rate, by the Mortgage way. rates fall to 6.7. 6. Uh, I was on the phone it recently make a difference. with a mortgage broker, and he was talking about how a couple weeks ago he was writing loans in 7.5. Wow. Know? But now uh, they have come down a little bit. It's well, a lot all of them been laid off. On where we're going to go. Yeah. Uh, where the Federal Reserve is going to stop raising rates? That's the question. So that yeah. was that was part of the last prediction is that they'll settle around five to six. Yeah, I think that's. More I think that's for, the sweet spot. Yeah, yeah, for so, next year. You know. By the way, I've brought it up before. My parents bought their house at eighteen percent interest rates. Wow. Well. And they put down forty percent. Then whenever somebody so, tells me something like that, I say, "How much has the price gone up?" Yeah. It was probably 10x. You know, yeah. Yeah. She exactly. bought it for 80. So it's probably now 800. The, the people who hear that, they're always commenting, you know, well, you know, now it's so much more expensive. Yeah. So it balances out, but it hasn't been very fair to that balance. So. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So here are the last predictions. I like that, though. Life is good. Life is good. The real deal is the publication <laughs> so, so for real estate. So if it's over 7%, life is good. <laughs> well, you'll see us at the bar. <laughs> <laughs> prediction number four. Yeah, it'll be a lot of broker parties at that point. Uh, prediction number four. Here we go. So I'm, we got four more. We'll do a quick prediction. Number four, investors activity will cool, but we'll see a surge in first time landlords. So first time landlords will increase, but investors will cool. Uh, interesting. 
And I think I dis disagree with that. Well, I was thinking if the prices come down, there are going to be a lot of people who think, you know, it's a great time to invest, to invest and be yeah. a first time landlord. Yeah. And they're willing well, to do Well, we have hard seen work. that where it was up for sale and then they rented it out. Yeah. So there are a lot of first time. So right now there are. I, I can't see. We've talked about on previous shows how much money these gigantic funds have. In, like they've raised billions of dollars. It almost like, sounds like uh, not plausible. Like how would investor activity cool, but there's more landlords. So I think it's the fun first-time landlords. First-time landlords. Yeah. So you've but never been a landlord legacy before. Legacy landlords are gonna cool off. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Prediction number five: buying with friends and family will gain momentum. That's a very interesting one. To be honest, I've never heard that before. Buying with friends and family uh, oh, will definitely. gain momentum. Uh, really? Oh yeah. Okay. I so mean, that's I, a prediction. it's definitely a trend. You know. Buying with me friends and, and family. Me and you could go buy some place in the Poconos and start renting it out. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Renting it out. <laughs> Let's move on. I'm sorry. I You're recently ahead. engaged. You know? ahead of my... <laughs> <laughs> in the Poconos. That's actually a good. I think there's yeah. There's no, a but those lot are these behind. like hot markets that yep. you just go and uh, put Lake it up Placid and rent right away. Lake yeah. Placid. Oh my goodness. The uh, where they have the horse racing up in New York State, wherever that place is. Uh, yeah, thanks. Thanks for helping Cascals? me out. Eh, no. Further north. Yeah. Oh, I know what you're talking yeah. about. Yeah. It's right. pretty popular. Syracuse, huh? Yeah. Yeah. It's really popular and expensive. That's, that's like a Lake Placid kind of place, like a bear. All right. We'll stop there. <laughs> uh, prediction number six, migration from one part of the country to another will ease from the pandemic. That's obviously kind of like yeah. A T ball right there, obviously. <laughs> like they're no clearly <laughs> I actually would say that it's gonna stabilize and kind of swing back the other way. You know? Some people that are like, actually I kinda don't like maybe Florida and I'm coming back to New York. I, I know a lot of people that did that, but they rented, they didn't buy. Yeah. Maybe you know, they hybrid California's a little bit different. They I think they had five hundred thousand people leave. <laughs> that's that's a lot of people. Yeah. I don't know how many people are flooding to California right now. No. You know, it's not like New York, but we're on an island. Hey, so. if we were agents out there, we'd probably be saying, now's a great time. They actually did say on an Instagram post, a lot of the L.A. brokers were talking about that it's increasing. So, you know, I don't know the L.A. market as much as they do, but it's interesting that there was likes on that comment. So I don't know if they're optimistic or whatnot. So last prediction, buyers, agent commissions will slightly increase. Uh, my colleagues at the office have told me that back in 2008, people would give you whatever commission you wanted. Wow. Because it was so hard to find a buyer yep. that they said, if you can get a good price. Find a buyer and financing. Yeah. Because financing exactly. was frozen. It was so difficult yeah. that they saw how hard an agent had to work. And yeah. once you were like, yeah, if you can bring somebody to me, I'll pay you whatever you want. Yeah. Just to get it off the market. 10%. Yep. <laughs> that's, that's actually a very interesting prediction. I would not have. I like that prediction. Yeah. I mean, I just think, I think that, you know. A professional will succeed in the coming months. 2020 and 2021, whether we liked it or not, the deals became very transactional. Sometimes yeah. you never even met the people. It yeah. was all done via Zoom yep. and the videos. So yep. now it is like... It really didn't take much skill. This whole year, yeah. I feel like I've actually gotten a chance to know my clients. <laughs> I like talk to them more often. Yeah. It's a much more client relationship, and that's where... Skill-based, too. Yeah. yeah. Skills. Yeah. So, we were talking about it yesterday, is that the skills are going to win in this market, and the people who have the skills or the agents who have the skills will be the ones who get the highest commissions, you know, mm -hmm. or be able to demand a higher commission. You know, in, in New York City, we split it. Outside the city, it's very different. Yeah. They kind of say 3% to the listing agent, 2% to the buyer's agent, which is crazy to think about. Yeah. You know, all, especially in the last two years, all you had to do was literally post a listing. Well, especially since, you know, yeah, it was a seller's market, it was very easy. Yeah, and I'm gonna get more commission? Yeah, it should be <laughs> to the buyer. Well, so that's our uh, counter offer. We definitely had a lot of counter offers there. Uh, countering the offer that is being presented in the news right now. So we'll see you next Tuesday. We're not going to take a break, but we will after Christmas. And then I will be solo starting January by myself giving the news. Oh, gosh. Yeah. You might not want to tune <laughs> you, in for You that. might not want to tune in for that. All right, guys. Have a great day. And we'll